Welcome to part 12 of the top-down tank battle tutorial for Godot 3.0. Uh, this time we're going to talk about ammo. We have added a pickup item that can restore health to our tank, repair the damage, and now we're going to add limited ammo so that we can give our player the, uh, the sense of urgency. they got to conserve their ammo, they got to find ammo crates to restore their ammo. All right, let's get started. Previously, we made the health pickups so that we could recover some armor when we've been damaged. And this time I want to add a different type of pickup that will give us ammo so that it's possible for us to give the player limited ammo and they have to go pick up crates to restore it. Now to do that, we're going to go over to our first over to our pickup object that we made. And in the script, we already made an enumerator uh, listing the health and ammo types. And so that means that all we need to do is make those both work. So I want to use a different texture because, you know, when we when we run the game, we have the little repair wrench hovering above the crate to let us know that's a repair crate. So I want an equivalent ammo icon above the ammo crates. So that means I'm going to need to load some different images into that icon sprite. And we can list those in the code here and load the one we need depending on which one. Preload. And so I'm going to use in my assets folder, I've got my wrench. That's the one we were using for the health. And then on the next line, we will preload the ammo bullet icon so that we know that's it, what that one is. OK, so I have two icons. And I listed them in this order so that you know health will be 0, and that will match the um, that will match the first one, which is the wrench, and ammo is the second one, which will match the second one. And I forgot my equal sign here. All right, uh, so we have our two images loaded. And then in the ready, we're just going to set whichever one is appropriate for what we've chosen. And so we'll set the icon texture equal to icon textures type. So, so now we can choose over here which type we want, health or ammo, and it'll choose the appropriate icon. And then in the pickup, we're doing nothing if you pick up a an ammo one. So instead, what we want to do is the body that picked it up, we increase its ammo. And this is going to be the same. I'm going to include the same RAND range so that we can have the option of making it uh, random between two values. We could also set this to 10, 11 here, and we'd be sure that you know it's always going to give back 10 ammo. Uh, but that's OK for now. So we're going to, so now we're, we have our pickup item set up and ready to go for ammo. We need to add ammo to the player tank. OK, here's our tank script. And we're going to add a signal. Just like we send out a signal when the health changed, we want to send a signal out when the ammo changed so that we can have the UI update and display the um, an accurate value for what our ammo is. And then we're going to have a couple of new variables here. So first, we're going to have a max ammo. And that's how much, how many shots it has. That's the, the maximum. So when you are down, that's how much you'll come back up to when you pick up a crate. Um, and we'll export that so that we can set that to whatever value we want. And then we also need a variable that's going to track our current ammo, how much we are currently holding. And I'm going to use a negative one so that we can indicate negative one. If it has negative one ammo, that means it has infinite ammo. That's the situation we're in right now where they can just 
unlimited, unlimited ammo, then keep firing. Remember, this is the tank script. This is inherited by our player and our enemies. So this way, what we can do is have the enemies stick with negative one. They have unlimited ammo. And then we can set this to some value, say 10, for example, for the player. And then they will only have 10 shots. And then when this, whenever this changes, we're going to use a, um, a setter function called set ammo to update it and have it change, um, have it do a couple of things whenever we pick up or use ammo. Uh, let's see. So in the ready, we're going to need to, just like we did with the health, we're going to need to emit that signal, the ammo change signal. And what we're going to send out is ammo times... 100 over max ammo. So we just send out the percentage of ammo we have left so that we can set the HUD to display that. Now in our shoot function, we want to only allow you to shoot if you have ammo. So if you if your can shoot flag is true, then your gun cooldown has run out and that's okay. But we also need to have ammo. So if your ammo is not equal to zero, so if you have a negative one, you're fine. And if you have a number greater than zero, you're fine. And we subtract one, uh, we subtract one from ammo. So now every time you shoot, you're, we're going to subtract one. And yeah, for the enemy tanks, that's going means it's going to be negative two, negative three, negative four. They're going to keep going down and down every time they shoot. But whatever. I mean, they're they're not going to shoot uh, billions of times. It's just going to be an integer. Doesn't really matter uh, what size the integer is. And we could even use that for stats later. We'd know how many times the enemy tank shot. Might be interesting. That's, we'll we'll think about that later. But that's good enough for now. And then uh, finally, we're going to write that set ammo setter function. So set ammo value. So when we change our ammo, uh, and that reminds me, we're doing this locally. So we have to say self dot ammo. So that when we change this value, it will call this function. If the value is greater than the max ammo, then the value equals max ammo. Yeah, so then we, we cap it there. We clamp it to that value. Um, set it. And emit the signal. And actually, I can go back up here. We're just going to emit that same signal. We're going to emit that ammo change signal. Also, when we set the ammo. All right, so that means now that we have all of this code added in here, if we go over to the player, we will now have a max ammo and an ammo field, and we can set this to 10, for example. Now my player has 10 shots, so I should be able to fire 10 times. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and now I can't shoot anymore. My ammo has depleted. So that's working. Now we just need to worry about the UI so that we can see how much ammo we have. So for the HUD, I've gone ahead and added a node here. So I added a, a vertical separator just to give some space between these two. And I'm using a texture progress just like we used for the bar, the health bar, except this time I'm setting it to clockwise instead of left to right, which means it's going to do a circular progress bar. And I'm using this, I'm just using this white circular texture for now, because again, I think, um, I think I said this when we did the health bar, uh, we're going to do, we're going to come back and redo the graphics for this UI, because I'm sort of grabbing, grabbing pieces from here or there, wherever I find them just to sort of build it for now. And we can swap in some other textures when we get something that um, when we have a good idea of exactly all the pieces that we've placed and where we have them and and make them look like a more coherent whole. So, but so I have a circular texture progress, 
and I've set the fill degrees to 180. That means it's not going to fill all the way around the whole circle. It's only going to use 180 of it, which means so that, for example, if my uh, value is set to 60% right now, you see where the you see where the percentage is, and if we were at 10%, we'd be there. 50% is halfway. 100% is the full semicircle, whatever we have it set to. So that's going to just show us, and that, that will go down as we fire, as we update the HUD. So we need to go into our HUD script and add a function to update the ammo gauge, just like we update the health bar. So that is going to be here. We'll say update ammo with whatever value we passed. And we'll take the ammo gauge dot value equals value. And that's all we need to do there. And then in our map, we have the player's health changed linked to the HUD. We're also going to connect the connect it to the HUD. update ammo function. All right, so let's give that a try. And we should see, yeah, see I set it, I set max ammo to 20 and my current ammo is 10, so I'm 50% and you can see it going down. Uh, oh, and then we need to, last little thing to test here, let's make this ammo create a an, or make this create an ammo pickup. So we'll make that an ammo pickup. And that should show us the right. Yep, see so it has the little bullet over it. And if I go pick it up, I am now at 20 shots. And this is going to give you some more flexibility with your ammo, or sorry, with your level design because you can, you know, make the ammo crates rare and then the player has to be really careful about what ammo they use. Maybe the ammo crates are dropped by the enemy tanks when you blow them up. So that's where you're going to get your uh, extra ammo from, uh, that kind of thing. So it gives you some more flexibility. And again, you can just set the player's ammo to negative one and you will have unlimited. That'll do it for this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Please feel free to comment in the comments below and let me know if you have anything in particular you'd like to see added to the game next. There's a lot of different ways we could go from here. Uh, so I'd love to hear your ideas.